Adney has changed science and has changed our understanding of science in many different ways. Adney is very important as laying the groundwork for a lot of neuroscience research, studying the brain and studying in particular uh, how the brain goes wrong when we get old. So that's why Adney was started, was to develop methods for studying dementia and in particular to develop methods that could be used in randomized clinical trials. ADNI is so important because it's really provided longitudinal data on information on patients that otherwise would never have been gathered. The study's been going on for over 19 years. Just imagine the amount of data you could get. The overall goal of ADNI was to validate biomarkers for clinical trials, and the clinical trials are largely done by the pharmaceutical industry. The foundation for NIH had been recently created by Congress and given a mandate to receive private funds and also to provide funds directly to the federal government. So we had one award to do this work as a public-private partnership. A public-private partnership is important for a lot of different reasons. Um, first of all, the, the people or the organizations that are gonna really find the treatments for Alzheimer's disease, uh, find the cures, are gonna be the drug companies. We can help develop the methods, we can develop much of the background, but the clinical trials, um, the actual development of drugs is really the expertise of the private partners. 18 or 20 years ago, nobody did this kind of partnership. They didn't think that you could. To bring together all of these stakeholders and ask them to put aside their competitive interests in order to work together for a common goal was not at all anything anybody really knew how to do. There weren't a lot of models for it. What we did know was that this was a project that couldn't be achieved by any one group working alone. It had to be a united front tackling it. And for that to work, it had to be done in an environment of trust. The real revolutionary thing uh, was in how we share data. The idea that ADNI over 19 years would develop such a rich database that no group of humans in an entire lifetime could possibly analyze and make sense of all of it, means that distributed analysis, distributed thinking, distributed computing throughout the world was necessary. I think it's harder for companies to share data once clinical trials are done. People have taken these data and they have done modeling based off of the data that have been collected in an effort to identify the right types of populations that can be recruited into clinical trials. ADNI is a huge project. The overall funding for ADNI since 2004 has been over $200 million. The project has led to over 4,000 publications some people say it's the most highly impactful project in the whole field of Alzheimer's disease. A lot of other uh, resources such as this have been established since then. So for example, PPMI, which is for Parkinson's disease. Um, there have been others in schizophrenia. And I think a lot of those have been based off of how ADNI was set up because it was one of the very first where the data were immediately accessible to the public. Now, anybody, anywhere around the world can access this data and use it for any sort of analysis on their end. ADNI is where we sort of first figured out how these models are going to work. And every project that we've done since then has been a little bit like ADNI, but tweaked a little bit along the way. So by now, about 20 years later, we've got a really, really good model that will enable discoveries in a lot of areas. The partnership between FNIH and, and ADNI uh, through its, its guidance and, and um, management of the PPSB has, has been a great collaboration, both in terms of pulling together stakeholders with common interests and as introducing these stakeholders into other related biomarker studies that would make a large impact on the study. So I think that's been a very important part of, of the ADNI PPSB and FNIH partnership. I am optimistic that we, in my lifetime, 
will develop interventions, therapeutic interventions that will slow the course of this tragic disease. It's really because of ADNI and our ability to develop now over the past 19 years biomarkers based on our neuroimaging, but also ADNI has led to tremendous advances in data analysis, in biostatistics, in quantitative assessment of complex data. There are new opportunities to intervene, and that's what gives me hope. It's not enough to just say what is good for clinical trials. It must take the next step because those trials turn into medications and treatments, and those treatments are given to people. It would only be possible with people that are generous enough to volunteer that have the illness or that may develop the illness. But the data that's, that's generated isn't going to help them. It's going to help their children, their relatives, and the rest of, the rest of society. So they're the ones that have really made the most important contribution. And the final and most important thing I would tell them is thank you. Thank you for participating in this. Thank you for donating your time and effort and everything to this important research. The ADNI data has been used to design a number of clinical trials, uh, some of which are now ongoing, which remove amyloid plaques in people who are completely normal to see whether or not that treatment would prevent their future cognitive decline, developing symptoms, and dementia. And we all hope that ultimately these trials are successful so that in our lifetime, we just won't be seeing Alzheimer's disease in, the, in people who have been exposed to preventative treatment.